why is it that America seems less dominant in so many areas, that its lead has evaporated, that it's falling behind other countries? Well, instead of telling you what's happening, I want to show it to you in a way that you will probably never forget. So I've asked my friend Hans Rosling to come and do his magic. Rosling is a professor at Sweden's Karolinska Institute, and he has an amazing way of showing how the world has progressed in the last 150 years. The story Hans will tell you highlights the central idea we need to understand, which is that this is all less about America falling behind than the rest of the world catching up. Hans? Thank you. This is the world in 1860. Each bubble is a country. And this axis down here shows wealth, income per person, $500, $5,000, and $50,000. And this axis is health here. The length of life from 20 years all the way to 80 years. And the size of the bubbles here shows the size of the population. And the color marks the continent. The Americas blue, Europe yellow, Asia red, and Africa green. And in 1860, almost all countries were down in the poor and sick corner there. But the Industrial Revolution had started to pull Western countries out of poverty. United Kingdom and Australia was leading, and US was on the third place. And look what happened when I start the world here. As years passed by, the population in Western countries got better education, new discoveries helped to control infectious disease, hygiene improved, and the lifespan increased. And the West got healthy and wealthy on the same time, while the rest remained in poor and sick down there. And from 1900, look, United States is taking the lead and becomes the engine of progress in the world through the First World War. That was the Spanish flu and through the 1920s US is leading it's only during the Great Depression that US falls back temporarily and gets the lead again through the Second World War into the Cold War and we stop here 1954 at the end of the Korean War and at this time United States was on top Europe had fallen behind and Japan was trying to catch up here and interestingly a small country on the equator Singapore was just behind Latin America was in between and China and India were still down here with low life expectancy and with low incomes but they had gained their independence and look what happened after 1954 here. U.S. continue in the lead, but Europe is closing in, Europe is closing in, and Japan there, they make this amazing catch-up together with Singapore and other tiger economies in Asia. And here, China and India got education, small families and health before they start this amazing economic growth, where they catch in together with more and more emerging economies, and they keep up the speed through the last economic crisis, and here we are today, 2010. And what is most interesting here is if you look at the replay, you see this very clear how the West took off first and then how the rest is following and catching up. And how will this continue? Well, let's make a projection into the future by going backwards first. This is where China was 1980. They had very low income over there, you know, and US was all over here in the other end. And we never thought this would happen, that China in 30 years would move so much faster than the United States. Now, if both countries would keep the same speed in economic growth in the coming 30 years, where would the US, US end up? They would end up there. And where would China end up? They would end up, yes, the same spot. But this is not so probable. Because when a country gets richer, the population gets older, and it's very difficult to keep the same uh, economic growth. We can see that on Japan. So a more intelligent way of looking at China is to see what has already happened today. I will split China here into its provinces. It's a huge country, and it's better to look at the provinces, because they are so different. Look, Shanghai is already here. The catch-up is done. And the uh, coastal provinces are in between, and the inland prov provinces are just like other countries in Asia or Middle East or Latin America. Now, Singapore and Japan were trailblazers, and the others are coming closer. And very soon, China and India will come to a place near to you. This is fascinating. And it highlights the central idea that it's not that we're falling behind, it's that the whole rest of the world has begun to catch up. Uh, and, it, and what it suggests is that it's not so much that people are overtaking us, it's that 
everybody is moving into the same space, that there's a whole set of advanced countries, European and Asian, that are all converging in one space. Yes, it's the healthy, wealthy corner. That's where people want to live. I live there myself. It's a nice place. But can, can so many countries live there? Can the United States prosper with so much competition? Yes. I mean, it's more competition, but it's also more customer. So you're an optimist? No, I'm not an optimist, because that's an emotional state. I'm a possibilist. I say that it's possible if we keep peace and we keep free trade and we protect human rights, we can all live up in the healthy, wealthy corner, because in the end, that's where people want to go. That's an optimist for me. Hans Rosling, thank you very much. Thank you.